Hello. So today we're going to have a quick look at Avia Planner. This is an IFR flight planning tool for all of the major simulators. It looks and feels a lot like Navigraph, but it isn't as capable as Navigraph, but there's a key differentiator in that it costs a third of the cost of Navig Navigraph. So it's two thirds cheaper if you want to write it the other way around. That does come with some limitations and we'll touch on those along the way, but I thought I'd just take you through it to begin with. So one huge selling point is you can get started for free. So it's a web-based flight planning tool, I have to say straight away. So you can get started for free. You get three days for free to try it out and have a play with it. You get the flight planner and you get Lido charts at the moment. So Lido charts are an alternative to Jefferson. They've been developed by Lufthansa Systems and they I guess you could say it's a more modern layout. We'll have a look at them in a moment so you get to have a nose around them. Um, they are going to release some pilot training materials. It isn't out yet, which will take you through, I guess it's part of the Lufthansa training of you know teaching you what's on the, the Lido charts. And then they're also going to do the same trick where the up-to-date nav data will become available and the Avia Planner system will update the simulator for you with the latest nav data. But as I said, at the moment, Avia Planner only costs a third as much as Navigraph for the equivalent functionality, which is essentially nav data and charts, which is what a lot of people buy Navigraph for. OK, so let's go and get started. So we click on Get Started for free, and it takes you down and shows you the various subscriptions. So you can either go monthly or yearly. And then if I go to My Account, because I've already got a free account, I can open the web version of Avia Planner from there and you see the, the, the options to go to the various bits. Only Planner works at the moment. So if we go and click on Planner, it will show you any flights you've previously planned and you see a map display using Mapbox. So it's all web based. So we can go and make a new flight. So we'll go and put in our call sign. So we'll just make something up. So British Airways 123. And we'll choose a flight level, so flight level 360, so 36,000 feet, and say, for our example, we'll go from EG um, SS Stansted to EGPH Edinburgh. And we'll choose an aircraft. So shall we go with a, a Boeing 737-800 maybe? And we'll create the route. Notice you get to choose fuel reserve and fuel factor as well. So we'll create the route and it'll be very quick. And there we go, and it zooms in nicely on the map and shows you from Stansted up to Edinburgh. Notice it doesn't show you the SID or the start on the map. So notice immediately we can then go and export in some of the common formats for the popular simulators. Or we can just go and create the flight in here, and it pulls up a display that's very similar to Navigraph with the, the routing across the top and the elements of that route down the left-hand side for you to interact with. The major difference is you can't interact with the route. The route is you're given what you get, basically, so you can't customize it. Whether that will change in the future, I don't know. But this is much more like the real world in a way, that a commercial pilot is not going to get to choose which waypoints he's going to fly via. He's just going to be given a route. OK, so what can we do? So you'll see when you look at a route, typically you won't have the approach chosen. So we'll go and select the approach we want. So we'll say we'll come into um, Edinburgh on ILS runway 24 and say, there we go. And it illustrates into the map where that actual approach fits. And you can see there's the vectoring there where you, you take instruction for that part from ATC. Notice, though, alongside each of these elements, if there is a chart available, so for the Utah V1R um, part of the route, there is a map. So we can go and show that. And you, this is the topo maps. Sorry, not topo. L Lido maps that we were talking about. <laughs> topo is used in um, some walking navigation systems. OK, so you can see the Lido maps are quite a lot more sparse than a Jefferson map. And I think that's a good thing. And they use the ghosting of lines in the background to you know to arrange a focus on what is of import to you on the chart you're looking at so that's a common theme if we pull up the agp e1e chart here you can see the same thing so the route's coming in for agpad is coming in from here to tartan is the end point and then you're deciding where to go next similarly if we look up the ils chart much more similar to a jefferson chart but they are different so it's Typically fitting in all of the you know the the pertinent information. 
if we go and look at that star chart again, where it gets really interesting, if you do not proceed beyond tartan, so it's very, very clear about where you're going into the hold before proceeding on. Okay, so say you wanted information on the airport itself, we could go and pull up, let's pull up Edinburgh to have a look. So we've got Edinburgh basic information, we've got the runway information and the charts. So say we pull up the, the airport chart, that's the, how the Lido charts look for airfields. You also get parking stands, and I think this is nice, they zoom in on the parking stands. So they cut out the extraneous parts of the airfield so you can fit more detail in or make it more easily readable. Um, so obviously SIDs and STARS are as you would expect, and approaches. Do you get some other things as well? So you can pull up airport briefings to, if you really want to go in depth about learning um, about an airfield. The, I think the airspace maps are really, really lovely. So obviously you get meta as well and you get previous meta reports from the most recent uh, records. So yeah, it's it's a very, very nice planning tool. So the question becomes how can we compare this against the others and how can we inter interoperate with the others so i guess if you're thinking about using simbrief you can kind of use it with this in a way so if you were to borrow the the flight plan from it so we've got this flight plan that we've generated here so there'd be nothing to stop us copying that yeah so if we came back out we can see there's the route there or in when you first look at it like so we've got the route here so you could borrow that so we could create that flight to see it in here then we could go over to Simbrief for example actually I think I've already got it running here we go so you could put in BAW123 you could also import the PLN file so we could go what was it EGSS EGPH and you could choose your aircraft type so it's going to be Boeing 738 wasn't it we chose there it is so you could borrow the same data and throw it in here. And notice it's just written Sid and Star. Well, they shouldn't really be in the route anyway, and we can analyze the route. Route is valid. And then you could obviously generate that and take it out. That'll make your operational flight plan. So yeah, the, well, I guess that's the differentiating point again. This is not going to make you an operational flight plan, whereas Simbrief will. But by the same token, you could take this over to Navigraph if you've also got Navigraph, and you could paste in your route we just made. So obviously we take SID and STAR out because they're not part of it. And that's going to do the same thing again. And in this, exactly the same way, you could go into Little Nav Map and you could do a flight plan route description and you could paste in the route we've just done. So again, take the SID and STAR out. And say create pl flight plan so it's done exactly the same thing again so you can by using the description of the flight plans you can interoperate with the other options around but i think it's just worth looking at this from the point of view if you if you don't like jefferson charts for whatever reason you can use avia planner and it will give you the lido charts instead i think the only massive hindrance of it is it's only really any good for big traffic, so the jet, you know, business jets and big commercial aircraft. The reasoning for that is it doesn't have the charts for any of the smaller airports. Yeah. So if you go and look in the airports and we go and look up, for example, EGTB, which is my local airfield, Wickham, it will appear and the runways will appear. So it's taken me to exactly the right place. So there it is on the, the map box map, but there's no charts. Yeah, so obviously if you go to one of the big airports, so London Heathrow, for example, you get the runways, but you also get all the charts. Yeah, so it depends what you're after really. So there's the airport and so on and so forth. You've got the SID stars approaches. So yeah, it's, I'm torn. It's a third cheaper than Navigraph but I'm not sure that it's giving you a third of the functionality. But if you are running to a budget and you would just like charts and a, flight, a nice flight planning tool, the argument, I guess, against that is that Navigraph can, oh, sorry, Little Nav Map does the flight planning for free. Um, and Simbrief does the flight planning for free as well. 
So what you're really buying with Avia Planet, as far as I can see, is the Lido charts. But you're getting them for a few pounds or dollars a month instead of um, quite a significant amount of money for Navigraph. But then Navigraph has all of the integration into the rest of the simulator. So, you know, there are many, many aircraft that will show Navigraph charts within the simulator. So it's a bit of an uphill battle for Avia Planet at the moment. But I, I do like the direction it's going, and I think the the Lido charts really look lovely. So if we go in and make a flight, and then we can go and have a look. I really do like these. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you again soon. Hope you enjoyed that.